Oh, man. I was a good criminal, too, man. I mean, I used to, at school, I used to, like, steal teddy bears and stuff from the playroom. <laughs> The downfall of Sodom and Gomorrah, the classic story, is the fact that the sexual crime was so high, which is what today's society is getting into. That's why God destroyed it. I would go to see real life teenagers because they made too many movies during the 70s with those bell bottoms. Like nobody wants to see bell bottoms no more. These are the 90s. For all you party animals out there on this cold New Year's Eve, traffic is stop and go. From CXIY, we're saying goodbye to the 80s. We got 47 minutes to get to the countdown of New Year's Eve, 1990. I don't know if we're going to get there. I hope so. Northbound on the Gardner is still jammed solid. So for all you party goers stuck in traffic with only five minutes to go to the big midnight, Let's rock and roll with acid test. I guess it's okay if I'll be stuck in the car with the countdown. No big deal. All right, people, here comes 1990. Six, nine, eight, seven, six, five, now I'll probably be um, on my own, have a job, even that are on the street, dead. I want to hear all the white people that have to make some noise. Yeah. I want to hear all the black people that have to make some noise. Where will you be a year from now? We live in high and mighty in the state of Brooklyn. remember my dad's message for the new year and help us to all have um, good re um, New Year's resolutions for the new year to change ourselves for the better. Stop smoking, right? Um, be nice to my parents, but I'm always nice to them. I don't know, all sorts of things. Find a boyfriend, uh, get good grades, whatever. So what's this movie about anyway? We're gonna follow the lives of five 15-year-old girls for a year. For a whole year, this is going to be so embarrassing. Hey, my name is Lena Pinkasik. And my bro I just turned 16 yesterday, January 13th. Happy birthday to you. those teenagers that want to grow up so fast and like be like actually like 20 years old and stuff what about you no i don't want to act like i'm 20 years old i just want to like grow up naturally normally but you're always complaining you want to be treated like an adult yeah i want to be treated like i'm 16 not 12. i was 12 four years ago so how does someone treat you when you're, like, you're, when you're 16? What do you have to do? Just a little more adult-like. Like? Like, like just more adult-like. I don't know. Like what? Like, like, let me have a car. Buy me a car. My dad builds houses and all that. My mother, I don't know, she works in the factory somewhere. I mean, I'm a wage store, I think. We came to Canada in 1980. We all came from Russia. So I got here when I was six. They're nice to me and stuff. It's not like it's a, a military house or anything. We just walk around. I don't know. They just know our parents. They're laid back and stuff. 
How does your father look like? Like me, except bald. Except I look better. They know nothing about me. Like, they think I'm some good girl. They don't know what I do. Well, I don't do that bad, anything bad. But I'm not the good little girl. It's like my sister said, when she was my age, she was like, and she was a rebel, like, outside. But I'm like, I don't show anybody. My parents, I'm a rebel. What are some of the things that they don't know about that you do? <laughs> okay. Before. Just not much, but I used to. And I smoke and I drink and all that. You don't do drugs anymore? No. Shh. There's another room. Lena's in grade 10 and attends a school that specializes in technical and trade subjects. It's known as Rugville. I don't know, people there, like, they have rockers, a lot of rockers there. I don't think teenagers know much. Like, people say we don't care, but we don't know. They don't teach us about the environment, politics, all that. I wish they did. Like, I'd really want to know more about it. Like, my history teacher told me that they have nuclear bombs inside the ground mm -hmm. or something, all that. I never knew that. Where's the negative 17? Next? No, on the next side. Yeah. The complaint about D. <laughs> I'm not one of those people that skip oh, and don't care sure? about school. I really care about it. Well, it'll become negative. Have you ever skipped? Yeah, but for a good cause. Like what? Like going to visit my friends at a different school or something. Staying home, sleeping. Would you let Lena go out with boys? <laughs> Not much. So how old do you think she has to be before she can go out with boys? 18. How old? 18. <laughs> what if he's a nice, respectable boy? Okay, you go and do this. What kind of a boy would you like to see Lena going out with? I never think about it, I don't know. Just a regular guy. Can you ever see Lena getting married? Of course. You all sit around planning it out. How old I'll be, who he will be, how, where how... would I meet him? You know what's my big goal this year? Finding a boyfriend. Really big goal. So how, how are you going to do that? Do you have like a sort of strategy in mind here? No. Why is that so important to you? Because I want a boyfriend. I just want a boyfriend. You know how you, when you're younger, you have girlfriends, like friends' friends, all through your life? I want a boyfriend. I want now. You know? Now, now, now. Okay, I'm Erin West, and I'm 16 years old as of January 1st. Happy birthday, dear Erin. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> I try to be friendly with everybody and get along with everyone. I'm not extremely smart, and I wouldn't say I'm thin or anything like that, but I don't know. I guess I'm just a friendly person. <laughs> Okay, my mother is a nurse, and my dad, I honestly, I've never understood it. He works with Metro personnel. He's the boss or something or other. For the last two months, Erin has been enrolled in a modeling course. Today, she's preparing for her final modeling exam. We learned a lot about manners. We spent about two hours on how to get in and out of a car properly and how to eat properly and how to hold your fork and knife and cut your food and how to introduce yourself and how to sit down, when to stand up. It took a long, long time. So from the point that you take your first pose, I'll start the count. Good. One, two, three, four. Erin passes her Nine, exam and enrolls in an international modeling competition to be held during the summer. What kind of a life do you want for Erin? Oh, really, whatever she wants to do, whatever she's happy in. Uh, yeah. We don't have any specific goals for her. Uh, 
She uh, is succeeding in school, and that's important. Erin's an excellent athlete and always has been, and she's succeeding in that, too. Mm -hmm. And uh, these are the things that are important to her right now, and so they're important to us. And uh, uh, as long as she's happy, why, uh, we're happy. Erin mm -hmm. is in grade 10 and attends a private school where the tuition is $7,000 a year. I'm not sure if it's really a better education, but I think that the atmosphere is... Um, I don't know, I guess it's a lot more family-like or something. We have mother-daughter teas and um, father-daughter semi-formals, and we have um, fashion shows with the parents and champagne and cocktails and stuff served. I don't know, I guess it's just kind of the lifestyle that I enjoy. Okay, my name is Helen Kim, and I'm 15 years old. I've always been pressured to become a doctor, 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 you know, and if it's not a doctor, it's a, it's a lawyer, it's a lawyer, you know, or if it's not a lawyer, a missionary in Africa, you know, something, you know, that's, I know that's not very much money, but something that's, that's um, recognized or, you know, so that other Korean families will go, oh, you know, oh, look at Mrs. Kim's daughter, she's just the greatest, you know, and everything, you know. During the school week, Helen works at two part-time jobs one at a doctor's office, and one at a walk-in medical clinic. She also teaches piano to a number of students. On Saturdays, she takes Korean classes. Helen also exercises every day, practices regularly with the school band, volunteers at a local hospital, teaches Sunday school with her mother, and is actively involved with her church youth council. Helen has also skipped a grade and is an A student in the Advanced Grade 11 program. Every year, Helen enters the Kiwanis Music Festival. third prize in the advanced Bach piano competition. My dad, he's usually a refrigeration heating mechanic, but he also does preaching as the youth pastor of our church. Then my mom, she's a radical Christian, like she's totally into her religion. <laughs> Sometimes we uh, have some difficulty in uh, communicating with her because the way how we grew up in Korea is much different. Korea still their tradition respect their parent and uh, very like a home rule. Okay, my dad got so fed up of us being late for school, not doing the dishes and not doing our bed that he put up a fine chart, okay, and it's it's in our hallway and it says fine and it's very official, you know, it's very special, you know. There is a $10 fine for not doing the dishes, a $40, $40 fine for being late for school. And that's like my one, that's one paycheck for me. And, you know, and whatever, $5 for um, not doing your bed or not doing the dishes, you know. And it says 20% interest if not paid by first day based on the compoundary rate. I don't know where he got that from, but... You see, it's all very special at our house. Helen has already paid out $200 in fines and still owes $40 for her messy room. My name is Astro Crosby, and I'm 15 years old. I'll be 16 on March 24th. I'm a demon seed. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a problem child, yeah. I realize that there's rules everywhere you go, right? but I just can't stand rules of having to be in the house at a certain point, um, telling people exactly where I'm going, exactly what I'm doing. Last year, Astra dropped out of school and ran away from home numerous times. She would live with friends and occasionally on the streets until her mother would find her and bring her home. I sat and I thought, what am I doing? I'm 15 years old. I mean, I'm living the life of a 40-year-old junkie. I need a home. I need my parents. I need somebody to protect and take care of me and feed me and love me and hold me when I need to be held. I mean, I can take care of myself to a point. And when I get in too much trouble, 
I came running home. Mm -hmm. Oh, my family. Oh. Well, I have um, a stepfather and a mother that I live with for the next two weeks and that I've lived with since I was four years old. Uh, I love my mom. She's great right now, a manager, but, you know, she's always been there for me. My stepfather's always been there for me, too. Astor has been living at home for the past three months. She recently enrolled in a government youth employment program. I've got to try, you know, all worlds. i got to try everything. It's just what I'm about. I have to try everything, find out what I like, and then go down that path. My name is Rhonda Joseph. I'm 15 years old, <laughs> but I don't look 15. <laughs> like, I want to become um, a really good black actress. I want to be like, this is Canada's first black actress to make it. That's how I really want it. The thing is not being rich, it's just being famous. That's what I want, to be famous. I want to be, I want my, I want my, when I'm dead, I want people to look me up in a encyclopedia and write stuff about me, how I was a great person. <laughs> That's how I put it, you know? <laughs> yeah. She did all this kind of work. She was the best actress, you know, I want. <laughs> I don't want to sound conceited, but, you know, you sit down there and you daydream. Cool. My father, he spoils me a lot. My mother, she spoils me sometimes, but she's more strict with me. My brother, he's there. He doesn't talk too much. All he does is beat me up when he feels like it. So, so I have an okay family. What do you do for money? Beg my father. <laughs> my father provides me. <laughs> yeah, just yesterday I asked him for $50, and he was like, yeah. Please. I don't know. I hope he'll give it to me. What are you going to do with it? Do my hair. Do you think Rhonda's spoiled? Yeah. She yeah, she is. By her father. Yeah. Okay. How does he spoil her? Well, because um, with me, when I say no, then he say yes. When I don't give her, he gives her. If I don't give her, then she says, oh, I'll go to daddy. She gets it. Uh, so what, what do you think about all of this? It's true. <laughs> Where do you have your fun at school? I'm um, in the hallways or in the cafeteria. I just make jokes about people. We just start talking. And some guys are at school, they're really horny, right? So they start acting up and we're like, and we diss them up in their face and everything. That's our way of having fun. You do what? We diss them. We cut them up, burn them. This is Rhonda's first year of high school, and she's in grade nine. How much interest? Yep. Who's that? Okay. Okay. You said that your time, length of time, had to be years. Great. Math? Oh my gosh! When I go in that math class, I don't want to go. I stand outside the door. They go, run and go in. I go, I don't want to go in. I hate math. When it comes to math, I freeze. Do you ever ask the teacher for help? <laughs> Why not? I don't want to. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I got frustrated, so I don't bother to ask. <laughs> what did you get on your last math test? Six out of 24. <laughs> Uh, so what's this I hear about you skipping classes sometimes? <laughs> it's something that us teenagers do, you know, sometimes you don't want to go to your classroom, right? So you usually skip off what we do, we probably write a fake note, show the teacher, sign out, and do what we have to do. Then after we come back and sign in or something like that, so they'll never know. I was never offered drugs, and I hope I would never be offered to take drugs. And alcohol is not, I can't, I can't even drink alcohol, I'll tell you that much, I get stoned. Drugs is, is totally wrong. It's a form of witchcraft. Um, I haven't smoked dope for a long time. I did acid a little while ago. I, actually, no, I smoked a joint a couple of days ago. But <clears throat> I haven't done blow. I've done blow once since I've been back from Vancouver. And that what, was... What's blow? A cocaine. Yeah. Oh, I only drink special occasions. Mm. When I'm with my friends, I don't need that. But I went out at a party with guys especially. I want to loosen up. It's the end of January, and Lena is still looking for a boyfriend. 
Like, I really want a relationship with some guy. I don't understand them right now. You know what I don't like is when they think they have to treat you like in the old fashioned way, like open the door for you and stuff. It's like, I can do it myself. If I had a boyfriend, I think of us as two equal people. That's the way I'd want him to see it. Uh, you pig. <laughs> I have a county with that guy, Garrison. Garrison. He's always there. I was talking to my friend Sabina, right? And she told me she had this prediction by the um, when we, end of this year, I'll have a boyfriend. I mean, really? How's he gonna look like in all this? So I hope it'll happen. Have you been going on any dates? No. Astra disappeared shortly after our interview with her. Two weeks later, we finally tracked her down. She was living in cheap motels with her new boyfriend, Blair, and hanging around downtown with her best friend, Annie. Can I have one of my cigarettes? Holy shit, you would not be the <laughs> shit that's going on. I moved out. Um, I'm staying with a friend. I'm getting an apartment probably on Saturday or Sunday. Um, let's see. What else? I'm engaged. And uh, I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, if it's a boy, it's going to be called Rob Sean Harris, and if it's a girl, it's going to be Emma Ingrid or something like that Harris, because it's Blair's grandmother, and I don't even know if I'm going to keep it yet, but we decided to name it just in case. So when, how do you think you're going to arrive at the decision? Well, see, if I've had, um, like a few miscarriages, right, and because I had an abortion at such a young age, uh, my uterus uh, can't hold kids very well. And so I'm going to get it checked out, not right away, because they, they won't be able to tell this early. But I'm going to go get checked out and see if, um, you know, if I can carry it or not, because I don't want to go through another miscarriage, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't want to get an abortion, because it may be my only chance to have a kid, but I don't want to have a kid yet, so... I, I know I'm going to be a player for a long time. Yeah, yeah I've said this before. <laughs> I know. Like, that's why I haven't told my mom that, right? Because she'd say, yeah, bullshit. But yeah, uh, I, I know. know I will. <laughs> like, I know I will because, I mean, I, I'm not even attracted. Like, I, I'll see a guy and think, oh, I wonder what he's like in bed, but I won't go for him. When, when I was seeing other guys was like, ooh, come here, honey. You want to come home with me, that kind of thing. What happened to the youth employment program? It was awful. And, and it was from 9 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Right. And that's a lot of time. I mean, it wouldn't have been so bad if I um, had my own place, right? But um, I was up until like 12 o'clock at night, you know, selling dope, whatever. Five o'clock in the morning. Five o'clock in the morning, <laughs> actually, trying to, you know, sell dope or something so I can make money, so I could go to a hotel room, so I could get some sleep, then wake up around one or two in the afternoon. By the time I'd get down there, it'd be way too late. I said, forget it. There is the most amazing. Get out of the way, you dweeb. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna cross over this way. What are you ooing and aahing about? Oh, gorgeous yeah, man. The record store. Oh yeah, stud. So. Okay. Aaron and her friends are having lunch off school property. The administration did not give us permission to film inside the school. The principal feels that my group of friends and I would not be the best representative. representative of the school. So what are you doing here that's not that you're not supposed to be doing? Oh, we're not nothing. supposed to be off school we're property. We're not supposed to be smoking in your car. We used to get in trouble for going to the ice cream man who's right outside our school. <laughs> we, get, <laughs> we get in trouble for school. crossing that flood and I almost got expelled for crossing the street. <laughs> not, not like, no, 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 well, the general rule is there's no smoking in uniform and if you get caught smoking in uniform on school property, it's but a week suspension. And if it's off school property, it's only about three days. Our socks always have to be pulled up and our shirts always have to be tucked in or we'll be stopped in the middle of the hall and asked to do so. Um, besides that, our skirts, we often roll up our skirts because if we didn't, they'd be down to our ankles. And going down to prayers, we often get caught and asked to lengthen them or roll them down. But then when we leave, we always roll them up again.
when you go to private school, for some reason, since all the other private schools kind of know each other, we kind of try to hang around in the cleat and stick up for each other because a lot of the public school people don't like us. And so um, we all kind of, like, we go out with the Crescent guys and the SAT guys and the ECC guys, and they all kind of live in different worlds. And so you have to adapt when you go out with each kind of group. You adapt to what they're going to be like. You either wear cowboy boots, you wear running shoes, or you wear just regular shoes and jeans or a skirt and different things like that. I had a boyfriend about a week ago, but he's gone now. I'm not laughing at that. It was a really good relationship. I enjoyed it a lot. I'm really happy it ended really, really well. We're really good friends. What do you think of uh, premarital sex? Um, um, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. As long as you've been going out with someone for a long time, and it's not one of those spur of the moment, meet a guy, think he's hot, sleep with him kind of thing. I don't even know because I don't plan on doing it, so I don't know. Um, I guess you both have you both you would have to wear condom, probably use birth control. I mean, like everyone wants it. I have never done it yet, though. No, I've never done. Nobody believes me. I find a really good way of communication, and it's fun. Why not do it? I mean, people. Some people feel it's more private. They rather do it with someone they love when they get married, and that's fine. I have nothing against people like that. But then there's other people that like having sex, like me. I like having sex. And if I'm attracted to someone sexually, I'll let them know. I'm totally against it because of, my, of course, the Bible and, and my belief in God. It's the middle of February, and Helen has just found out that she's on her school's then honor roll. In math, I'm getting something like, I don't know, 99%. Like, for myself to see other people not being able to understand something that's so simple, everyone's just sitting there like, huh? And he sits there for the whole period explaining one concept, a simple algebraic expression that I learned in grade three, I think, that I, I used to do algebra in grade three because my dad made me. Sometimes I tune myself out for a whole week, but it's so boring I can't take it, you know? Every day, Helen skips math class for 20 minutes to visit with friends. I have a whole range of friends. My dad said it's okay to have guy friends because I always get calls from, from um, guys. It's like my dad just said the other day to my mom. My mom goes, you were out with some boys. It was 1 o'clock, you know, that 1 o'clock in the morning thing, right? And my dad said, you know, just calm down. She's at the age, you know. She she's gonna be, you know. It's okay. If she's with some boys as long as it's not one on one, you know. And it's hardly ever one on one. I'm usually group dating. Today, Helen invites a close church friend from another school into class. She tells the teacher he is her cousin. This is Kim's cousin from London. What's his name? John. John. I didn't hear you say hi to John. Hi, John. <laughs> Johnny, do you like Helen? Of course he does. He's my buddy. <laughs> what about you, Helen? You like uh, John? Of course John? I do. He's my buddy, right? Yeah. What does your father think of Johnny? <laughs> Answer that one. Answer that Me. one. Me. So. I don't know. I guess he thinks this, he's a, I'm all right. I don't know. I asked him a lot of questions. Always guys. bothering him at church. Always telling him to speak Korean. He always shakes his hand too hard. And I don't know. It's something my dad has for Johnny. I don't know what it is. Like I said, they're not serious. They're just friends. And I'd rather get the experience now very on a very basic level than get into trouble when I get married. But I know that, you know, in terms of religion, that I, I have a husband picked out for me from by God. But it's hard for me to refrain from talking to boys and getting called. You know, it's not my fault that some guy likes me or whatever, you know? Shopping? I guess. 
shopping and then church. official yet you just seen each other you say that but we say check in when I find out a guy likes me and I like that guy I don't eat for days I won't eat for say like four days until everything's going okay but once you find out a guy likes you and he really likes you and everything like that you're like who cares you're on top of the world <laughs> What I do, I try to get them wrapped around my finger and let them do anything for me. Like, I, I threaten them, too. That's what I do. I threaten them at times. I told them, I go, get any ideals or break your legs. You know? I just threaten them. That's what you have to do with them. You have to show them who's boss. It's not I don't want him to do everything for me, but you have to show them where you stand. You have to show them that you're not the stupid one so you can't take advantage of me. Because I'm prison. I hate when people take advantage of me because you're not going to hear the last of me yet. Booty Boy has um, a cameo. I came with those high top hairdos. The high top is usually faded hair. It's wavy. B girls um, listen to rap. They dance a lot. I can't stand B girls. They walk around kissing their teeth and that, that whole thing and talking in this bomba chombo language that you can't understand a word of. Okay, here I go. A prop. That is the typical Korean. They wear their penny loafers. Baggy jeans, it looks like they're shitting them. Um, like they hang down to here. Again, has their racist to themselves. People who believe in, in the way how Hitler run, ran things, you know, the supreme race, his blonde hair, blue eyes. A lot of skinheads are really cool guys. They're, they're, I guess they're the kind of guys that would stick out for you no matter what. Gina's Italians. I don't, I'm not saying I don't have any, nothing against them, but they wear those pointy point shoes. The hair is out to I don't know where. Tons and tons of hairspray a day they use. Just, you know, big hair. They put so much hairspray in their hair. I don't know how their brain works. Gino. <laughs> Glass. I don't know why, but can I say this on camera? Okay, I always think that they are the horniest. The open shirts, the gold chains, hairy chest, you know, walking around, grabbing their balls, and going, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you know. They're really greasy and slimy. They're the kind of guys that when you walk down the street, they whistle, no matter how short, how fat, how ugly, how anything you are. I don't label myself. Me? I don't know. I can't, I can't categorize myself. I don't know. I, I wouldn't know how to classify myself. At the beginning of March, Astor returns home to live with her parents. Well, I made an appointment uh, at an abortion clinic uh, just for a council session. Um, I was pregnant and I was going to get an abortion, but um, I miscarried about seven days ago, so I just canceled my appointment. D does your mother know about you canceling the appointment? I told her and she goes, well, you're not lying to me now, are you? This whole pregnancy wasn't just fake. And she, if she had been in my face saying that, I probably would have hit her. I know that sounds bad, but, you know, it hurt when she said that. I started on my pill again. You know, there's still the, the worry about AIDS and stuff, but I've got one boyfriend now, and if he's got the disease, I'll kill him. <laughs> So I'm going to ask you to tell us who you are. Who am I? Yeah. 
Laura Anthony Harris. Okay. Um, how old are you? 20. And where are you from? Trinity Bay, Newfoundland. This one here? Yeah. I drew this one while I was in jail. This is my friend brain dead. Like, this is an actual person. Oh, I okay. see. Okay. This is brain dead's drawing. And, and what about your uh, tattoos, Astra? I just got one. I guess it was my Valentine's Day present. Valentine's Day present? I guess so. Yeah, so Black Widow. He drew it. Who, oh, Blair did? Blair. How do you get money? Stay in hotel rooms? Ah, uh, scamming. What does that mean? Uh, stealing uh, microwaves and, and VCRs from stores and selling them. But do you do that? What do you do personally to get money? Nothing. People get money for you? <laughs> what kind of career aspirations do you have, Claire? Career aspirations. What's that mean? <laughs> In terms of, have you ever a job um, in the future? or? What do I want to do? What are your plans to do to make money? For a place and food. For now? Survival. For soon. For now or like later on? Later on. Uh, I want to be one of either three things. A recording engineer, a tattoo artist, or a lawyer. I'm serious. That's a wide combination of it things. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm serious, though. I am serious. That's just what I want to do. When I'm drunk and someone pisses me off, I get extremely violent. And... One or two things happens. I either punch him out or I leave. And when I start punching him out, I don't stop. It's like people just start grabbing hold of me and and pull me off first. Um, unless, so like like last Friday night, what happened was I was hitting this guy so so many times, so much and so hard that I just started getting an asthma attack, right? And I couldn't breathe. I couldn't do nothing. I deserved to, it, though. I had to crawl, you know? It scares me to think that, uh, holy fuck, this guy's so insane. But at the same time, it, it makes me feel good because I've got the protection, right? I got this guy behind me. Do you think it'll ever be directed at you? No. Violence? No. What about you, Blair? I've never hit a woman in my life. Never have, never will. Looks like magic, but Two weeks not. later, Blair is arrested for allegedly assaulting his ex-girlfriend and sent to the Don jail to await trial and sentencing. When you hear the word feminism, what does that mean to you? Um, I don't know, I guess anything that's kind of a female action or a way a female acts or kind of a thing that a female is expected to do. Are you a feminist? No. When? When? <laughs> why not? No, why not? Uh, like, why Why aren't you a fe feminist? I don't know, just because I think everyone should be equal. Ew, well, I think feminism, <laughs> I can't say it. I think, ew, it, I feel like there are a whole bunch of lesbians. Ew. I don't know why I say that, but, like, for women's rights and all that. Like, I'm sure men care about our rights also. What do you think about women's rights? It's good. I think there's no reason for feminism. I think people should be... No person is equal to each other. Everybody is different. Nobody is equal to each other. But I feel that why should a woman not get a job just because she doesn't have a penis? There are certain biological things that you cannot change about a man and a woman. And there are certain things that men can do better than women, but of course there are certain things that women can do better than men, right? So I think that feminism, the ideal, like, of, of woman, of woman, you know, having to be, be totally equal or better or whatever, I think that it's sort of in a way wrong because it's, it's, it's twisting, you know, biological things that you cannot change. Feminist? God, that's a, that's a hard one. I don't get it what you mean by that. Like, what about women's rights? Yeah, we must have our rights. We're on this earth too, you know, not only you guys. So, yeah, we do have our rights. Equal pay for equal work? Mm hmm. Women? Yeah. You know, they say that we can't do anything a man. It's true that men could be stronger in a way, but we have it here, babes. We have it.
In mid-March, the girls go on their school break. It wasn't fun. You could have fun in California, but not as a teenager. You have to be 21 or over to go to clubs. I couldn't even get to go to any clubs. Mostly all my cousin's friends. They're under 16 and they have a kid. It's a fad down there. It's really a fad. Racism is real bad down there. They accept you by your color or something like that. Like they said, even though I'm a Canadian, I'm still black. So we arrived there. The most beautiful place I've ever been in my life. Now, I've never been to a third world country like that. The fact that there are donkeys, like, riding along on the highway beside you with two-year-old kids bringing water to the families. The houses were smaller than my cottage, about two rooms, and about 15 people lived in each of them. The little kids would come up in the street and be like, white person, white person, and run up and, like, grab you. They'd be like, oh, and they'd go on in their little language, and you'd smile and wave, and it would make them all so happy. Lena spends her entire March break working at Sani Fresh Dry Cleaners. Helen spends her March break at a Christian retreat. religious in the way to say that I follow, you know, I drink only this on Sunday and I eat my, I don't eat my pork or whatever, you know, I'm, I'm just sort of like, you know, I, I, I go by the basics. Well, my parents tell us we're Jewish. I, I say, okay, but we believe in Jesus and stuff. But we're not, we don't go to synagogue or anything. I don't usually go to church or anything like that. When I was little, I went to Sunday school. I go to Catholic church, so you can say I'm Catholic. Satanism isn't really a religion, but yeah, that, um, yeah, my, my religion, if you want to put it that way, is Satanism. It's now the end of March and Blair has been in jail five weeks awaiting trial. Astor has been visiting him regularly. He's inside right now on my birthday, right? So he's, he feels like an asshole and... I feel really bad because he can't be out because he feels like an asshole and I don't want him to. And Astra is into chocolate cake with green icing and it's from years ago when she was little I did it once and she really liked it. We put mint flavoring in it and now it's tradition. I'm kind of upset. You know, it's supposed to be my sweet 16 and everything just seems quite oh, you want it sour, to quite sour, <laughs> you know, the opposite. In what way? What, what are the oh, things? Just everything. I mean, I have I have a great boyfriend, but my great boyfriend's in jail, and I have a semi okay family, and they're fighting right now. My parents are fighting. My mom and I are fighting. Doug and I are fighting, and it's just kind of I don't know. And also, we did like a lot of drugs last night, yeah. like acid, and it sort of freaks you it's, out. It's it's affecting you know, us. Yeah. So do you think this is a special birthday for Ashton? Sweet sixteen? No, I don't think it is actually. I think Sweet Sixteen is um, when a lot of rights to adulthood, and I think Astra reached that at about 13 in many ways. I mean, I don't think for her it's all that important. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Astra. Yes, you get your wish. Take a really deep breath and maybe 
should move the tape closer. Good. You did Help. it. I would have done it. I had more air. I'm not asthmatic. Oh. I just don't tell anybody your wish. Oh, wow. Those are gorgeous. Oh, wow. Thank you, Mom. These are great. In a few words, can you tell us what you thought of your birthday? Wow. I don't know. I find it just probably one of the worst birthdays I've ever had. Why weren't, why weren't you happy with the gifts? I didn't find them special. My mom kept saying that they were going to be special. I didn't find anything special. I don't know what I was expecting. I just thought it was something special. I don't know. What did you want? What did I, I wanted a car. Say mm -hmm. this in a nice way, though, please. I don't feel very nice about it. Mm. I don't want people here it's late tonight. It's my birthday, Mom. Yeah, you did your celebration last night, though. Well, last night or not, no last night. I mean, today is my Pastor, birthday. Pastor, look at me. No. Come on, come on. No. No, pe no, nobody can be here late tonight. I'm not saying people are going to be here until 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, we'll probably leave around 12 or 12.30, whatever. Well, I'd rather Astra. people le left even earlier than oh, tonight. Oh, please. Come on now, Astra. You come on now, Mom. It's my birthday. <laughs> you had your big celebration mm. all what? last night. Yeah. Call them over. Yep. It's not going to be a late night tonight, okay? Do you like Astra? Oh, yes. I love Astra. Do I like her? Oh, sometimes she drives me crazy, but I like her, yeah. I think she's uh, a really vibrant, uh, wonderful person. And that's why it's so hard watching this, this kid with so much going for her screw up like this. I just want to take her and shake her and say, you can do better than this. You know, and I've tried. I'll help you. I'll do anything. And it's all rejected. But yes, I like her. She can be a real bitch, and she's, <laughs> she's been really mean to me over the past few years. But I, you know, we fight it out and come out the other side of it. You want to put your makeup on? I'm wearing makeup. Do you want to get dressed? I'm going to put more makeup on. Yes, I know I look ugly. I have to put more makeup on. I wear tons of this. You have to wear it when you're a kid. This. I just love going to work. We just have fun. We gossip. We talk about what happened in school and stuff. Guys are drop by sometimes. Like my friend, this guy she knows, is like just a friend. They like go in the back and talk and stuff. It's just fun there. And Norman, like the boss, he's like really nice and stuff. He's like 65. And he only hires girls because they're more trusting and stuff. I'm going to win. Not again, you're not. Darling. Um, Dr. Calder has left for the day, um, but I can... I make about $300 a week. I'm saving my money for a car, hopefully, and probably um, my university education. Of course, I don't expect my parents to support me now that I'm working and stuff. It's still hard for us to make ends meet and stuff. So my parents, they could give me money, but I feel guilty because I know how much we're struggling. We're not in a good financial situation. We're just kind of barely making it. This sticker here is sort of like a memento of the time I went to HMV at Square One to um, get their autograph. And I brought my British flag shorts and they signed the butt. And, um, and this guy here, he gave me a little a little kiss and a hug and all the girls in the line started screaming and everything and so that's my memento of that and this is well obviously this is Jesus do, do you uh, try and convert non-believers at school not really um, it's hard for me because um, it's not like um, you could actually you know how would they make it really idealistic and they say okay you can change things like this but it's really hard because most of your friends know you as going out with them and stuff, and when you try to talk to them about it, they usually turn you off really fast. So it's hard, but I try sometimes. I get up at 4.30 every morning, every day of the week. We start rowing at 5.15, and on Saturday and Sunday, it doesn't start till 6.30. We do warm-ups for about 20 minutes, and then we're on the water at 5.30.
and we rode for two hours, and then we all drive up to school, and we have showers at school and stuff, and then we start school. For the last two months, Erin has been training with her school's rowing team. It's now the middle of April and minus 10 degrees Celsius. Like last year, sure, I didn't want to be there at 5 o'clock in the morning, but I loved rowing, and I loved seeing the guys when we got down there from, like, Trent and Western and stuff. Now, I go down there. I sit in the boat the whole time. I bitch about being cold. I don't want to be there. I'm overtired. It's just the fact that I don't like rowing, period, anymore. I talked to my dad about quitting last night, and he said I'm becoming a quitter. I quit skating, and I dropped a subject in school, and he doesn't like the fact I'm thinking of quitting rowing, and that if I do, I'll have nothing more left. And I woke up this morning, I was sitting in the boat. I didn't want to be there at all. After this practice session, Aaron quits the rowing team. Rhonda finds out the guy who's been checking her already has two girlfriends. She tells him to drop dead and stops talking to him. When I saw him with that girl, I was, I was upset, really, really upset. I didn't show it, but I said, I was like, if I catch him, I'll wring his neck. Went over to the store, got some chips and pop, and cupcakes, and I started to eat it. And I'm eating, I'm eating, until I got really sick. I threw it all up. Ever since I was a kid, the school program has never worked for me. I was a con artist since I was like in kindergarten. When I got to grade nine, I could still con, but it just, I found it wasn't worth it, I mean, What's the point? It was like for a long period of time, I was just bumming around the house, which was pissing off my parents. But now that I'm starting with this whole job thing, it's, it's much better. I've always had this disability, almost dyslexia. Um, I really have a trouble spelling. I've got a grade four spelling average, if even. And I can read, but I can't spell. Spells it under D or o, organic. I get A's and E's and I's and P's and B's and everything mixed up. It's really embarrassing. A couple times, um, everybody's been in a hurry, tons of confusion, something really needs to be done, like something written down. And they've said, uh, well, write this down, write this down, and then they, they'll take off whatever, and I'll kind of be sitting there going, um, I can't, but they're already gone, right? So the other workers here are really helpful in saying, well, I'll do this for you. And then I can very easily um, tell Barb or Mary Lou or uh, anyone else that, you know, I have a problem with it, I'm sorry. And all I have to do is remind them. Rhonda finds out the boy she dropped is spreading rumors about her. Oh, I heard how you tell everybody how I love them all. Love off means like um, I'll do anything for him. I'll jump off a cliff for him. I wouldn't even jump off a cliff for anybody, you know. So he starts saying how I loved him off, and I'm like, oh please, there's nothing of you to love off of, you know. It's like please, you're just a little speck there. My school is a type of school that once they um, hear gossip, it could turn around in a day like that. Supposing if I was walking home with a guy and a friend saw, they'd go up. And yeah, Rhonda, and they did this and they did that. And it's just, he could probably just walk me home. We're just friends, you know? And that's how fights start. I remember once this girl, he took out a knife and cut this other girl. That's how violent. I hate that. OK. OK. Bye, baby. Mwah. Bye. Talk to the sweetheart. My darling Astra, I love and miss you, babe. There isn't a minute that goes by that I don't think of you. It's making my time really rough. You know what? I can't wait to start our lives together. There are so many things I want to do with and to you. <clears throat> I'm glad I only have 21 days left. I love you, babe. I miss you so much, too. I know, I know you're on your rag, right? So I'm trying hard not to say anything wrong to make you depressed on me. Astra and her friend Annie are moving into their own apartment. This is the first time Astra's had a place of her own. Oh, I didn't know that you had this still. Yeah, of course. Yes. This will be good for the cat. 
couch for the couch. Just be yep. perfect. It'll go with the carpet. Yep. You've got to wear spandex under them, obviously. But... Right. <laughs> Sometimes you might as well just walk around naked. Right? Shouldn't now. We don't need these. We already got one pair of sweats. Okay, but you never know when we're doing our laundry or whatever. That's true. What are you going to do with the stuff that's just left here? Just leave it here. Astra and Annie's apartment is a one-room basement with a shared bathroom. They each pay $200 a month in rent and $20 a week for food. Astra's boyfriend Blair will move in when he gets out of jail. What are you making, Astra? Okay, it's beans. And then you put some cheese in it and melt the cheese into the beans? It makes it better. Then just bread and butter. Fills you right up. It's really good. With a glass of milk and you're all healthy. Friends are having a cocktail party before their spring semi-formal. Cheese. Cheese. One, two, three. This is my date, Rob. My baby. Hello. How's it going? And that's my other date, Jeff. This is my other baby. Now, how many dates do you have? Two. You have two. Why I don't do you have, have two eight. Dates? I almost had three okay. today. So I was going to bring another friend of mine, but. We decided he'd just come to the breakfast party because I don't think I'll get in with Ray. Erin and her friends have rented a deluxe bus to take them to the semi-formal. I said we ordered one with TVs and everything else because, well, that one's on a run. I said, yeah, but if we paid for it, then it should be coming to us. You guys, we can get a because couple well, of little radio. dollars. Yeah, whatever. We've got a radio. A, it's it's oh, an AFM piece of I'm shit. I'm so excited. Oh, my God. So smelly. You'll be sick. I'm not like impressed. The bathroom's it. open, it's leaking all over. Oh. <laughs> It has no, we're not taking this bus. We're not spending $400 on this bus, I'm sorry. It was supposed to have TVs, a VCR, a bar, and everything else, and all it has is seat. No, we're supposed to have a bar, TVs, and a VCR, and I'm not spending, I'm not spending 400 bucks an hour on, like, a wheelchair bus. Over lips. Just look at the fact that my friend's hands are so nice. Yeah, but TV added. Bye, my luxury girl. That's okay. The skirt can get dirty. Woo! We're wild. We're crazy. We have the air. Well, this program is $4,000. Don't step on it. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. I guess we're walking to the semi and hopefully we'll find something for the way back. Right. Anyway. So you're going to just walk there? Yeah. Well, it's not that far. It's only about two blocks. Oh. Two blocks? But, yeah. Fuck you, buddy. Now we have no, I have to go say hi. No, we're not seriously fucked. Blair was released from jail yesterday and Astra picked him up in a limousine. You guys here already? You guys gonna get married? Yeah. You are? Yeah. When do you think you'll get married? <laughs> you gonna be engaged first? Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're already engaged almost. Almost. <laughs> you gonna get a ring? Are you looking for a ring? I may propose before he does. Sort of. But what? He's sort of looking for you? Yeah. You got a one already? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. A week later, Astra finds out Blair is cheating on her, and she ends the relationship. Blair and I aren't 
not together anymore. He cheated on me. The whole time he was in jail, he was calling this other girl before he would call me. I just want to go on with my life and forget about him. Because, you know, I loved him deeply. And fucking screwed me around. In the beginning of June, Rhonda tries out for the school play to be staged next fall. The play is Our Town by Thornton Wilder. There's some things that you should know before we start. The first thing, it's the most important thing, is the time commitment. You cannot be on a sports team. The school play has to be your commitment, okay? Everyone has to do a cold reading of various scenes from the play. Rhonda? Okay, Dr. Gibbs and Joe Crowell Jr. Top of page nine, okay? okay. Morning, Dr. Gibbs. Morning, Joe. Somebody been sick, Doc? No, just some twins over the Polish town. Do you want your paper now? Yes, I'll take it. Anything serious going on in the world since Wednesday? Frank Gibbs, don't say another word. I feel like crying every minute. Sit down and drink your coffee. Show your hands. That'll be fine. That'll be nice. We'll do the same music we did for Jane Turbo's last month. I don't like the parts. You don't like the parts? Why not? There's, I don't know. I didn't like them. I couldn't act to it. Lena's cosmetics class goes on a field trip to a local shopping mall. doing this for a living? No. Uh-uh. No? Why not? <laughs> I don't know. It's not to... Well, why not? I thought you liked being involved in cosmetology. And... Yeah, but no, it's not enough money. My parents want me to be a hairdresser. I don't want that. Yuck. Like, I, I love doing people's hair, but no way. That's like going back. You know, they want me to be like the same working class as them, but I don't want that. At the end of June, everyone is studying for their final exams. Tonight on Fox, digital audio tape finally gaining ground. Erin, what's happening with exams? Um, well, I got a cyst on my finger, so I was unable to write exams um, this year because after writing for more than 20 minutes, the pressure builds up and goes to the cyst, and it can be dangerous. So the doctor um, didn't want me to write exams till after I had surgery. And this is what's going to prevent you from writing exams? Yeah. At the end of the school year, Helen's average is 90%, Rhonda's is 75%, Erin's is 68%, and Lena's is 52%. Lena fails math and has to go to summer school. Astra is still working at the deli and is making four fifty an hour. So what kind of parts did you get? Play some stupid paper boy. But I have to be a boy. They got the dress me. I gotta be a boy. Uh, how, you know what I mean? Nine lines! And the no, you know what really gets to me is some of the girls there, they never went out for a school play, and they got that biggest lean in parts, okay? And that really ticked me off. That really got me mad, because I was like, Mr. Tepper knows how I am. And the thing is, he doesn't look to see if you have quality. He just looks to see if you're good for that part. He just look, oh, oh yeah, Eric would be good to play um, a poor black person. You know, I'm not being prejudiced or anything, but the white girls got all the good parts, and I was like... You know, so I don't, I don't like that. Rhonda spends most of her summer alone or with her best friend, Erica. I like to be by myself because I don't want to go back to school. And you know how it is when you hear rumors and all that stuff. 
to hear all these rumors how these girls were doing this and these girls were doing that and oh let's say i have a bunch um, i'm walking with a bunch of guys oh rana must be sexing all of them that's the rumor rana's pregnant oh yeah so rana she was under the tree with them one of them and they took turns that's what you were here and the thing mm -hmm. is i could be just walking with them nothing that's what okay. me and erica fight <laughs> i don't fight she fight Shut up, because she's rude. I had to, I had to throw her shoes rude. on Monday. I had to throw her shoes outside. I had to house. hit her. I, had, I kicked her out of the house. I had Repeat to with the broom. Uh, beat her with the broom. She was behaving. She was fake to it, me. I had to show okay. her who was boss. She tells me to come over her house and she me up, okay? Yeah. Of okay. course, you know, you know. But I think she can't do that at her house, because I tell on her. I she told on her mouth. yesterday. She has a big mouth. Where would you like to be? At Brooklyn. I was funny. And are you going to be there? Yes, I will. Yeah. Set up with people constantly crashing at their place, Astra and Annie move into another apartment. Astra's just been fired from her job. The movie people, I've got the cameras on and everything. Oh, my God. Hi, Astra. Oh, I just woke up. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm trying to clean the place with tiny guys outside. The job at the deli. You got fired. What happened? Well... Basically, I got sick of dealing with Muslim, Muslim, half Muslim women that wanted to get abortions and divorces and uh, feminist lesbians with armpit hair down to their waist and trying to, trying to change me into what they wanted me to be. Like, they, one was trying to make me a Muslim, the other one was trying to make me a feminist lesbian. I mean, like, you know, that's their views, fine. But they did not like mine. For money, I've got a job right now. I'm busing at the Queen Plaza Hotel, the restaurant in there is called Chatters. This paycheck, I should get a little over $100, because I haven't worked much. How are you surviving this? Are we surviving off Annie's paychecks? When we have no food or anything, our parents like take us out shopping. Thank you. So after, who is Michael? Michael's my new boyfriend. Um, what's your picture of him? Well, my first um, attraction He's got beautiful hair, he's got gorgeous eyes, amazing body, and then as I got to know him, he's got a brain, too. A brain, too! Lo and behold! <laughs> what, what was it about Astra that attracted you? Um, Honesty. She's very feminine. I like that. Most most girls I know are black guys. Like, you know, I mean, swearing, and she's just not like that. She's a little different. Hmm. What about... Um, about her appearance, or she's gorgeous. I was a heroin addict for about six years, an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. so, and, and how long have you been on this uh, program? Well, four weeks. I was in jail for 18 months, and I got out, and I was only out for three weeks, and I was right back, and I knew it had to stop somewhere. So I talked to my mom. She backed me up, paid six thousand dollars to get in the program, and I'm sticking to it. It's just this whole attraction to these criminal like guys i don't know what it is. i guess because they're dangerous you know, he's sort of living on the edge but he's not a criminal anymore that's one thing he's like he's going through this rehab program doesn't do drugs doesn't drink are you violent i, I did have a tendency to get violent before but not now i've never had a woman in my life what if he called you goof and i just kick her in the butt and walk out the door most of the guys i go out with do have a violent personality and um, straight up, I think um, he would hit me if I ever called him a goof. When you call someone a goof, it means they're on solid, um, basically. You know, they're just totally, just low form of, of not even a person. You know what I'm saying? Like, it is a really horrible word. It's not necessarily um, for your generation, more no. our generation, um, and people that have done time. Tell him. I have to make sure right my hot dog people. Hey, it's dead animal flesh, okay? How can you... I'm having a birthday party. So, where are some of your... Where did some of your friends go? Oh, they went drinking? Uh-oh. Yeah. But, you know, I asked for it to be a straight party, but, you know, some people, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> so, Helen, mm -hmm. you've been telling us that you think that you're fat? Yes. Um, <laughs> I am, though. No, okay, now let's see this fat. See? See that? That's fat, okay? She thinks she's fat, Helen. Do you think she's fat? Helen? Very fat. <laughs>
come on out. You need to show your true self. You want to take off that baggy, that baggy pants. <laughs> Shut up. Oh my God. <laughs> Hormones. Oh, no. oh, these are so cute! <laughs> oh god. Okay. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Yay! No boyfriends! No boyfriends! One, two, here comes the metro sailing through Like a big ghost ship upon the mighty ocean Check out my rhythm, my rhythm, my motion Flex it, cause the dance that I'm The type of music they're playing right now Is this the type that you perform to? Like those two guys in the middle you were filming? You have to know how to dance Yeah, yeah, you have to know how to dance really well It's like you're competing against Yeah, that's right And if you lose, then people boo oh, you If you win, people oh, like boo you but... Yeah, like they kind of like Yeah, they, they cuss you Like they, they go like this and they look at Like they... How do you like the job? Uh, it's okay. Um, you work a lot of hard hours. You work a lot of hard hours, and um, you don't get paid too well. But it's not bad. How's your summer going? It's kind of a drag. I haven't been up at the cottage where I want to be, and um, I'm not done with tan. I'm not enjoying it, and so it's really not like being on break at all, and I don't like it. And that's why I'm going to quit and just go up to the cottage. So when are you going to tell them that you're going to quit? I think I'm going to tell them tonight after work that um, I probably won't be returning. Do you think your dad's going to say you're a quitter again? Um, no, I'm just going to tell them that they didn't need me anymore. Because then he'll feel sorry for me and he'll support me for the rest of the life. That's what I need. Cause I don't know what I mean. Can you tell us how you uh, got, got your poison it? ivy? Well, okay, me and Sky were just like in the woods, sort of. And we did it in the woods, you know? And I, a week after I found out I had poison ivy. Did you know this guy very well? Yeah. Did you, so how was it, was the experience the way you thought it would be, or? No, going to the dentist is more fun. <laughs> was that bad? Was it that bad? Yeah. Mm, two seconds. It was like nothing. Did you like this guy? Yeah, sure. Is this the kind of guy that you would like to have a, to be a boyfriend, or? No. I want someone older. So what attracted you to this guy? Nothing really. Just wanted to use him, sorta. Of. So how do you feel? The same. I'm glad I did it because I've been waiting for a year, a whole year dying to see what it's like. So now I know. Now my life is fulfilled a little. Anyway, we didn't use any protection, so I had to go and get an after morning pill and all this. Now, I have to wait to see if I'm pregnant or not. Well, probably not, right? 95% chance not. And then the doctor gave me birth control, which I don't know use ever. Which I've, what? Birth control. Like, I don't, I'll use it, but I don't think I'll have a need for it. Why? I don't feel like doing it again. Look what, what happened to me. You know how people get, like, a roll in the hay? I had a roll in the poison ivy plant. <laughs> I 
Do you think people are going to talk about you and say you have a bad reputation now? No, oh, please, who cares? Uh, right now I'm like too much pain to really care. Do you know what poison ivy looks like now? Yeah, it's tall, big, and green and bright. I love Brooklyn. Brooklyn's my second home. I like, you know why I like Brooklyn? Because it's noisy. I like noisy places. There's a lot of excitement. But I have so much fun there, you know? I have cousins always making fun of the, um, yeah, you Canadians, the way you talk, hey, amen, a hey, hey. I remember one time this girl asked me, do you hunt for your food in Canada? I go, how stupid can you get? You know, I was like, oh yeah, I really hunt for my food. It's cold and we live in igloos and everything. Because it's America, they're ignorant, they think that America's the best. <laughs> That's why. That's the way they is. You know, it looks like they don't get the education. It's like no one's teaching them about geography. What is it? In this materialistic world, I have found a home. For this man cannot live on bread alone. I was once known as a man with a hefty bank account. These days all I can do is to take my money out and spend it on missile condom. Erin tells her father that she was laid off from work and spends the rest of the summer at her family cottage. People first do meet us, they're very, they just sit there and they stare at you and they automatically judge you as being a rich bitch snob who always gets their way again and everything like that, but it's not like that and I'm not like that. I just have problems like everyone else does. Guy problems, family problems, school problems. It seems that every single person that goes to a private school is suspected to have like money trees growing in the backyard, but it's not like that at all. There's a lot of people that parents are seriously working just to, because they want their kids to have better education, or they think that they will from a private school. Your mother is one of those people. Yeah, my mom works hard because my parents, when they first got married, my dad was gonna pay for all my sister's schooling, my mom was gonna pay all, for all of mine, so my mom is the only one that pays for it. And she works hard to pay for it. I don't know, I don't think money's really important, but I know that it, I've, I'm the kind of person that would love to have horses in the backyard and a pool that I could go into, indoor, outdoor kind of thing. And, but everybody does, I think. I mean, everybody dreams about being there, living in the castle with the perfect guy, so. Do you think it will come true for you? No, probably not. <laughs> it doesn't come true for many people, and I'm sure I'm not one that it will come true for, but I guess that's why I just have to strive harder myself and try to make me being the one bringing in the money. And then it's up to me whether I have horses and indoor outdoor pools and I don't depend on somebody else. So could you live without boys? No, not at all. I'd die. I hate them all, but I couldn't live without them. You hate them? I hate them because they're the, they cause the most problems in any girl's life. Completely. Mm. By doing what? By just being obnoxious and pretending that they care and then turning off and then going back and caring again and then finding another girl and because they, they break our hearts. When guys sleep around, people think of them as 
manly, sexy, grown up, like with studs and all this, they get a lot of respect. When girls are wild and they sleep around, they always get a lot of criticism from both guys and girls. I do something wild, right? Then all of a sudden I start hearing all this criticism or something. So I go back to being a good girl, like uh, being quiet and stuff. Whatever happened to the guy? Well, I saw him at McDonald's, right? I was with my friend Cheryl, and I couldn't go in. I'm just so scared. Not scared, but yeah, scared. Are you embarrassed about this? Is that why? I'm not embarrassed, but I can't just sort of look at him in the face. I feel bad what I did. I feel like sending him, like, I'm sorry notes or something like that. I don't know why. It just feels bad. It wasn't right. Why do you think it wasn't right? Because I don't like him and all that. Have you told your parents yet? No. What did you tell your parents that day? They were peeing in the bushes. They believe me. No, Michael, no. <laughs> Astra quit her job busing at the hotel. <laughs> She and Annie had a big disagreement over money and asked her to move back home with her parents. For a period of time, I had no one to talk to for a while, and that really frustrated me. And I always had Annie to talk to. And uh, then we kind of grew apart in a large way. It was more her decision than, than mine. She decided she doesn't like Michael. Michael Lemenis. He treats me really good. He does. For most of the time. I can be a bitch, though. I admit it. Oh. Even though he won't admit that he's an asshole. I admit, I admit it. Part-time asshole. Part-time. Semi-asshole. In your own little way. Aren't we all? Hmm? Money? Yes, he wants money. That's mine. <laughs> Get your own. <laughs> by Christ, Holy Spirit, and uh, hopefully we can make everything better, okay? Thank you. You are new born children, okay? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. The old one is all past. You are new, okay? I'm ready. <laughs> What we think is that is the Pentecostals is that when you get fully immersed, it's following the example of what the Bible said about baptism. Jesus himself, when he was baptized, was fully immersed by John the Baptist. That is a physical proof that you've been born again. Well, when you're a baby and say you just get a little sprinkle on your head, you're obviously not conscious of, of a decision to become a born again Christian. When you are older, you can decide on your own, and the baptism is a way of physically showing that you are making that decision. It says in the Bible that once you stay too much with the unbelievers, of course you're going to be changed a bit too. You're going to get habits, and you, 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 of course you start talking like them and, and stuff and, and dressing like them. So. Once before that happens, you have to get out of there before, you know. But with me, I, I do associate with a lot of unbelievers, but I try my best not to go over to their way. But of course I am an influence. So the non-believers, we, you know, I don't want to say they're going to hell because that's so, but it's true. It's true that they are. <laughs> At 
the end of August, Aaron competes in a modeling show which is being judged by international agents. I'd like to have longer legs. I'd like to be taller. I guess I'd like to change my hips so I can cut them off. A lot of people say I walk like a cat. And so doing runway for a while, it taught me how to walk properly. All my friends have informed me. I know, that was thrill. Oh, man. Yeah. That was not good. That was good at all. Up. They played the wrong music. It was supposed to be like a slow romantic walk, and they played like this jazz thing. We had to change the walk, and no one remembered the turns. And then, like, four people ran into each other. It was wonderful, actually. It was great. Well, I can't. It's my chest. I can't suck in my chest. Do it down at the bottom, then. I don't care. I'd like to get down to about 85 pounds. My father just plainly thinks I'm fat. He says that I've just let myself eat and eat and eat, so... My mother thinks I'm overweight. She'd like me to be a bit 90 pounds, too. Aaron is not selected by any of the international agents. Helen, do you still think you're fat? Well, I went to the, like, I went to the doctors because I wanted to see a medical sort of opinion on it. And I was actually turned out to be way underweight, so, um, like, I had health problems. And that's what sort of, that sort of ma started me thinking, you know, why would I jeopardize my wealth just to fit into a fashion look, you know, of how thin you should be? I think a lot, in a lot of ways, media drills that into your mind because you see these beautiful, thin girls, like, super thin girls, and you think, hey... Like, that's the standard, you know, but it's really not. It's just how you, you're you built, you know. So I just, I don't watch my weight anymore. I just eat whenever I feel hungry. It's September and the girls go back to school. What are you doing at a new school? I transferred. Why? Because I know a lot more people here than there. Yeah. Plus it's cleaner and stuff. At Northview there's like trade schools and all that. Trade subjects, you know. Here it's academic. I like the teachers here. Yeah. So do you think you're going to improve your marks? Oh, for sure. Yeah. What kind of marks do you want to be getting here? 70s. And what marks were you getting at Northview? 50s. Are you going to be working uh, at Sandy Fresh throughout the school year? Yeah, it's my whole life. Until I'm 88. So why did you uh, dye your hair brown again? It's a long story. I'll tell you another time. Well, tell us quickly now. No. Why? No, it's all the kids are going in. Okay, okay. Because this, this guy said I look better for my natural hair color. Uh, who was that? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Summer school. Are you still looking for a boyfriend? No. I told you. <laughs> Cut the question. Why? Because I swear to God, I'm walking out just if you ask me that again. I just said side school after my second day. How, how's it going? It's not going well. I've already got myself sent up to the principal's office with my friend Sarah that just walked by. And I got all my jewelry taken away, and I don't understand a thing that's going on in any of my classes. But it's going to be a really, really rough year. And what's the boyfriend situation? I'm going out with this guy, Chris, but he's up at boarding school, and Dallas just left for Florida, and I'm in love with someone new now. So I'm going to go out to TCS and break up with Chris this weekend, I think. So are we ever going to get to meet one of your boyfriends? You will, I promise. They come and go really quickly, but they're, they're, I think this one's going to stay. 
I hope. Is that the one standing over there? Okay. Okay. Thanks, guys. I'm at school. Contact. What kind of a school is contact? It's an alternative school. It's basically for dropouts and people who really aren't into the whole um, regular school system. Okay. In society, and I have to have an education, a legal education, to get a good job. So I figure I might as well go along with it if I want a good job. Is this going to be for real, Astra, though? Yes, this is for real. This is a decision I've made myself, and I decided, I thought about it for um, a few weeks beforehand, and thought that if I am, if I was going to start, you know, going to classes, then I'd be here five days a week, try to be on time, and I'd go full year and get as many credits as possible. I'm at home. <laughs> I thought it was. Why aren't you in school? Because <laughs> I wasn't feeling well this morning. <laughs> I had stomach flu. But, but Rhonda, you don't look sick. I know, but it passed. <laughs> no, seriously, I, I did have the stomach flu this morning. I was really sick this morning. And, and what were you doing this afternoon then? I'm watching TV and doing this right now. <laughs> What kind of TV are you watching? Soaps. <laughs> had to catch up. How was your summer? It was sort of mixed. I had a really awesome time at the beginning of it. Then I started to work, and you know how work is. It was full time, so it was hard for me to um, get time to see my friends and so on. And then after that, I loved my party. I had a really good time. And after my work was over, um, I had a really good time again. And then I met somebody and something happened and then the rest of the summer wasn't so great. I was seeing a couple of guys and then my father found out about it. You know, he told me that it wasn't right for me to go out with guys at such an early age and that, you know, I have to grow up a bit. What he said was that maybe I should have a curfew to control me from going out too much because maybe the um, overexposure would make me want to go out more and date guys and so on. but. So what happened is I got a curfew and that put me under control, I guess. So that was sort of the end of my going out in the summer. Helen is given a curfew of 6 p.m. and all her calls are strictly monitored. We have a Korean culture, Korean background, and the kinds of lifestyle and uh, uh, society we're going to be involved in future, especially we are uh, on the training uh, program to become a uh, spiritual minister, uh, the pastor. Uh, leading the church people. Uh, most likely, uh, the kinds of uh, uh, activity we're going to be doing is with uh, Oriental people. And uh, she's going to be uh, with us in the same stream, then uh, her marriage partner or dating partner, hopefully, some Oriental people first. That is the first choice. Are you going to try to see Oriental boys, um. Korean boys? I don't think so. Well, no, not that I have anything against Korean boys or anything, but um, I guess just whatever comes, like, in terms... I know now that my parents don't want me to uh, see any other culture sort of thing, so... I'll bring you some calories. My boyfriend Steve is a great guy. I really love him. I don't see any flaws in him except for the fact he is ex extremely materialistic. Everything has to be like thousands of dollars. Whether it's good quality or not, everything has to be expensive. Um, well, every morning I wake up and I have to go to geography. It's fun with Mr. Andrews. He makes learning fun. Um, there's no question. He's, he's really good looking. I can't stop talking about him because he's so good looking. Everyone in the school thinks so. Yeah, I have a picture of Mr. Andrews. He's really, really cute. He's really down to earth. And when we finish a certain topic, he asks us questions. And if we get it right, we get a candy for it. I just like that teacher. He's just funny. He's really, really funny. We were talking to Mr. Long. He was really cool. He was so different from other teachers. It's like last Friday he said to us, I don't want you to think of me as a teacher because a teacher is like a god, you know. But I just want you to think of me as a person who knows more than you do and who can teach you something. He's so cool. Everyone likes him. 
Some people think he's like a little weird, you know? But he believes in reincarnation and stuff. You know, if somebody was Adolf Hitler and he came back in another life, he'd probably be some paralyzed person, right? Because the karma is trying to teach them something, like in another life, that they haven't learned in a past life. So I wonder what I didn't learn in a past life. I don't know. Good morning, Astra. It's 8 o'clock, Monday morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm tired. Today? I'm not going to school anymore. I got kicked out. I didn't go enough. I'd always sit in the coffee shop and drink coffee and talk to my friends. But I didn't want to quit. I knew that everybody knew that I was going to drop out, and I really didn't want that to happen. So I've tried different kinds of schools, like the traditional schools, alternative schools tried everything and I find it just none of it works for me I guess because I don't work for it I'm scared of failing I find that that keeps me from going places I find it easier just not to try well school's okay uh, my marks aren't too great but I'm trying hard there's an awful lot of homework there's about four hours of homework every night so if I get through two hours I'm extremely happy with myself and I say okay I'll go to bed now, and I'll get up early in the morning and do the rest of it. I never do. I might with Steve every night. I get home late. I'm tired. I just go to bed. I don't have the drive to get the marks. I'm not willing to give up going out every night, talking on the phone, watching TV. I would really, really like to be about a 75% student, and if I got to that, I would be happy. I wouldn't push myself one step further to be a 90. Is it going to rain today? No, sir. You sure? Yes, sir. But did you ever made a mistake? No, sir. In the beginning of October, Rhonda begins rehearsing once a week. When I got the part, I was very negative towards it. I was, I was very rude about it. People told me just make the best of your part, and that's what I did. There are no small parts, just small actors. That's it. So I know later in life, if I got a small part, just make the best of it. Now, what was it you were saying? Is there anyone in town aware of the social injustice and the industrial inequality? Oh, yes, everybody is. Then why don't you do something about it? Well, I don't know. I guess we're all hunting like everybody else for the way the rich and diligent can rise to the top and the lazy and quarrelsome sink to the bottom. For their media class, Lena and her friends make a Super 8 movie. We're doing a section on horror movies. So me and four other guys were in a group, and we decided to do Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Look who's there! Look, what's that? Move it, Uncle Mo. Run! Run! Let's oh. Get away from me! You. Get your Come on, this off me. Oh. Go, run, run, run! I see him, I see him! There he is! Oh my god, I think he's dead! <laughs> Astra has moved in with Michael. 
He is on welfare and she is looking for a job. What's it like living with Michael, Esther? <laughs> well, the truth, too. The truth? Yeah, we really do. Actually, it's nice. I really like it. It's Everything is split 50-50. Um, neither of us does much more than the other. And uh, it's nice to be able to fall asleep with him at night. I like it. I like it. We, we fight a bit, but we fight anyway. So. Are you staying off your uh, drugs, Michael? Or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I drink very well. Yeah. What about the drinking? Well, Tell them, Michael. Yes, Michael. I overheard the conversation, so you can't lie. Yeah, I was on a bender last week. Past uh, two weeks? No. Four, three or four days with Mark. And then and the then, two days, and Friday few, and Saturday. And when then he came back, right? And then you had a few more days of a bender. And then had a bit of a break, and then Bill got out of jail and went on a bender for a couple more days. Okay. Well, it's been... On and weeks. off for about two or but three weeks. But before that, I was very good. He was, except then all of a sudden I stopped the rule of, of uh, no more drinking, and he went on quite a few benders. Are you going to do something about it, or do you think it's a big joke? No, I don't think it's a big Honestly. joke. I'll try again. I don't think it's a big joke, but, uh, you know, sometimes I go on these three, four day benders. I don't personally see there's anything wrong with them. if we get into a fight. You know what I mean? You get your period, we go into a fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's mid November, and Helen's curfew is still 6 p.m. Her parents continue to monitor her calls and still forbid her to go out on dates. And a lot of kids out there were probably thinking, oh, who, who cares about your parents? You know, it's the guy, the guy, go for the guy. But with me, no, I can't. I have to live with my parents, so. Oh, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I want. Lost but now, now I found I was lost. I was blind, now I see. During the summer, Erin found out she had cervical cancer and is just now starting to tell her friends and family about it. It's not too drastic, I'm sure, because she said that once it's gone, as long as I don't smoke anymore and I do come in for regular checkups, I probably won't come back. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want pity. I don't want anything. I, that's why I didn't want anyone to know. I was just, it's just my problem. And when my father came home the other day, my mom was crying downstairs, and I think he asked her what was wrong. And as soon as I heard him come home, I went right up to bed because I didn't want it discussed. Later on that night, he was like, giving them me, oh, Aaron, we care about you so much, we love you, I want you to all know, as if I was going to die tomorrow. And that's exactly what I didn't want, because I knew everyone would be like, are you tired, Aaron, go to the infirmary, are you eating enough, are you doing this, are you doing that, oh, poor Aaron, and I don't want that, that's why I didn't want anyone to know. Aaron has minor surgery and must go in for regular checkups. She is told to stop smoking. <laughs> Lena has asked her parents for a later curfew. I don't want to be a little girl anymore, right? And my dad started talking to me like I'm a little girl. I'm like, Dad, don't talk to me that way. Can't you see I'm 16? He's like, Who are you my little girl and stuff. I don't want to be like that anymore. I've grown up so much. I think I need to be respected, not like a six-year-old, but a, a 16. Any minute now, I'm gonna have to flee In a case of mistaken identity I was walking in the hills, saw a group of hikers But when I got close, turned out they were bikers I don't know who they thought I was But I'd have to guess an undercover first Two of them grabbed me, they said that's him They wanted to hey, change hey, me from them to live The first one says, tell me You don't need drugs You don't, <laughs> hey, hey, what are you talking <laughs> about, man? You do need Get your arm off her and some of those guys are really cute, you know? Yeah, and? So what? 
I want to just do some all. Like, remember how I told you? Don't take it to the heart, okay? <laughs> Why didn't you? Why, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, just each and every one of them. I just want to take their innocence away from them. Like my <laughs> Last Friday the night just ruined it for me. You understand? I'm like a walking hormone. We're gonna have a cigarette. My mind broke. Okay. I'll give you a cigarette. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is my junk drawer. It's got um little things like stretchy Santa and this is my soother that when I'm upset at night sometimes I sleep with this. It's just childhood stuff that I don't want to give up. What's not so great about growing up? You have to get responsibility and commitments and you have to be independent. And I'd rather be just kind of childish my whole life. She has got a learning disability. So in terms of film, uh, filling out applications, that is fairly intimidating for her. So I was hoping she could get an application and bring it back here and fill it out with my assistance or she just speak to you in person. Um, what did he say? Well, he says they don't need anybody in cosmetics, but they do need a cashier. And guess what? What was the yeah. first question you asked me? Would your dyslexia affect your ability to do the job? I can get by without doing a thing. And I can have food, I can have smokes, I can have dope, I can have whatever I want. And somehow, I always seem to get by. I don't, I don't know. But I want to break that cycle because I'm sick of it, because I start feeling bad about myself, because I'm not doing anything. I'm really confused about guys now. I'm always thinking what they're thinking of me, because they probably heard rumors and stuff about me. I heard the guy say, ew, she's such a whore and stuff, and I bet she's going to sleep around with everyone else. I feel so tight. When I went to sleep, I had to like take deep breaths and like and go to myself, okay, Lena, relax, relax. Because I take all these problems home with me, my mind. It's like I feel like I can hear the voices talking about me and all that. I have to face that fact that you are going to be rejected in your life. If people don't push me further, I'm a kind of person that if I do get rejected, I would mope for days. So I have to learn to always not quit. And because I'm, I'm not a quitter, that's one thing. I'll try again and again. Toronto Sun, um, I know that's not a very good source, but anyway, authorities announced Iron Maiden fan shot and killed policeman and wounded two others before dying in the shootout. So, I mean, that's a pretty direct result. You go to an Iron Maiden, uh, I mean, you listen to Iron Maiden and then you go out and do something like that. But, but this person is psycho, like this person has something wrong with them, obviously. I'm not saying a sane person would do that, okay? Not many who will, who will mock me or, or make fun of me, Lord, that, that I would just set, um, show that 
my life, through my life, that a Christian's life can be so amazing, Lord, in many ways. I thank you again, Lord. I pray again that you'll forgive my sins because I'm so terrible, Lord. But you are the one who, who makes me good, Lord. Thank you, and I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. holiday listeners out there, it's hard to believe it's the end of another year. From CXIY, we hope you're enjoying the festive season and wish you all the best. And now, here's something to take you into the new year. Oh, hi, Rhonda. How are you doing? Pleased to finally meet you. You too. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Astra. Hi. Nice to meet you. Did they film me any at parties? Yeah. 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 That's right. And I had a radio mic on, and this guy came up to me. He was like, what the hell is he thought was a cop or something because of the yeah. radio yeah. mic. And I was yeah. like, no, no, at the dance for New Year's, I had the wire down here. This guy came up and goes, testing, testing, one, two, three. <laughs> Every time the lights came on, all of the hot dancers always had to go in front of the light and start dancing, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah that's the time. <laughs> oh, so you think you big because you in some film and everything. I'll be, I'll be cussing them off. I'm like, yeah. play that. My friends are the play total play opposite. They don't want to be in the film, though. Film the back of oh, my head. tell me about <laughs> it. My friends are like, you know what you wanted to do? No, well, I mean, uh, anything else. Like, I, did you go out with your boyfriend and stuff? I don't like guys. <laughs> I know I'm not. No, I'm not one of those people. I'm not. No, it's just I'm. I'm a person. I'm picky with guys. I don't need it because they're too much trouble, anyways, right? That's for sure. Oh, that's for sure. Oh, that is pretty. That's, that's beautiful. beautiful. Oh, New York. Oh no. Here we go. Oh, shit. <laughs> No don't autobots. judge us too quick. Don't yeah. judge us too quick. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Yeah. Any, no any agents? I want a job. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, me too. Right here. I love you, mommy and daddy. Bye. Kiss me quick, cause I need to rest. My weary head upon your soothing breast. Any minute now, I'm gonna have to flee. In a case of mistaken identity. I was walking in the hills, saw a group of hikers. But when I got close, turned out they were bikers. I don't know who they thought I was, but I'd have to get an undercover fuzz. Two of them grabbed me, they said that's him. They wanted to tear me from limb to limb. The first one says, tell me everything. His buddy said, I'm gonna make you. Cannot live on bread alone. I was once known as a man with a hefty bank account. These days all I can do is to take my money out and spend it on Miss Oka Dumpling. She's my little dumpling treasure. Dancing with Miss Oka Dumpling. One of life's greatest pleasures. Bubble, bubble, forget all your troubles and stir up a silk and 